the here future, because I think we should only deal with space time, is a negative number. Now, I didn't really think this was the case. <laughs> I'd always taught, been taught that the future is a positive number. So events in space time are done with four vectors, and I'm just making one up here, one, two, three, four. Now, is four vector technology, is that powerful math? It's certainly common math. So I came up with what I call the sign test. So the sign of, say, one, well, that makes sense as long as one's like a real number. Uh, the sign of one, two also makes sense if that's a complex number. And the sign of a four vector, no, because multiplication doesn't make sense there. Whereas if it's one, two, three, four as a quaternion, then it absolutely does make sense. Now these days, I'm calling space uh, these space-time numbers because I think they live in space-time, but there's just no difference between that and quaternions, which of course is the, the proper name for it. All right, so we're gonna think about Einstein in space-time, okay? And uh, because that's where all the action happens, that's where how we can understand the logic of it, particularly if we start drawing uh, light cones, because that's very directly related to causality and all that stuff. And we're giving him a nice plane to do his thought experiments on. And he's right there in the center which is zero, zero, zero. We call that the origin, but this actually has a physical interpretation, and that is now for the first number, and when those three are zero, that's here. And we note that zero plus zero is zero, and zero times zero is zero, and I interpret that to mean that Einstein is the observer in this situation. Okay, so... Uh, he has his plane with an I and a J, and we're going to give him something to look at. Right at the point zero, two, zero, zero. What's he got to look at? His cat! <laughs> what a nice tabby cat in red. And there's that first number zero, so that's now. And that's not here, because it's one value is not... Uh, zero. I call it their I. So that's Einstein's observed cat, observed by Einstein himself. So Einstein, being a theorist, is going to do some uh, experiments. He's going to use the here past. That, I'm arguing, is plus one, zero, 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 times the position of the cat, zero, two, zero, zero, and it ends up Oh, exactly where it was. It's unchanged. And that's the nature of the past. The past can't change stuff. Whereas the here future, I'm speculating, is a minus one zero zero times the position of the cat, zero two zero zero. And look at that. The cat has to move. And as a matter of fact, it's a precise transformation. We know exactly where that cat ends up due to the transformation and ends up on the other side there at 0, minus 2, 0, 0. And of course, we got to draw the cat because that's, that, that's what got transformed. Great. So we can think of other very simple uh, transformations, uh, what I call their J now. So now is zero the first number, and then zero one zero for J, and we multiply it by the position of the cat, and we end up the cat ends up at zero 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 minus two. So now we have to draw this minus uh, K axis, so we can. Locate that point, 
And then, of course, we have to draw in Einstein's cat. All right. And let's do one more transformation. Let's go with the there I now. Now zero, then one zero zero times the position of the cat. And we end up with minus two zero zero zero. So the minus two, I say, is the future. And it's here. It's where Einstein is. So I believe that can be interpreted as Einstein's future observation of his very own cat. And that happens by the cat sending photons to Einstein. Now, negative numbers are actually a deeply odd idea. Remember, we had to import that from India through the Middle East. Um, and the time that is lived in the future, oh, well, actually, no time is lived in the future. But the time lived in the past, well, it's your entire life modulo now. So if we think about that sort of idea for Einstein himself, um, he lived uh, till 76. Uh, looking at his age, how much past versus how much future, you know, when he was one, just a babe, he had 75 years ahead at doubled his path as at age two, uh, got to 74, and on and on. So we can see that the past is increasing, but the, the future is decreasing. And really this analysis is based on the concept of changing from four vectors and tensor calculus to number theory. And that would be really quite radical because all of our equations these days are written in terms of tensors. And for this to be valid, we would have to actually rewrite like just about everything. So thank you very much.